So we went through the years of the best we could do was Harrison Barnes, Monte Ellis, Chandler Parsons. And I remember Chandler Parsons felt like it could be big for us. But then don't you have to go back to like Sean Marion for players that you felt good about that wanted to come to Dallas before this? Do you think this could be the start of maybe more people want to come to Dallas? Or do you think Clay is a unique situation? Absolutely. Now, can you get those things done? Can you, if somebody says, I want to come to Dallas, I do think in January, there's going to be players that are unhappy with their situation that are going to hope and wish, and I don't know how public they'll make it, but say, I want to come to Dallas uh, because of this situation. I, I think that they see, especially if you're a shooter, no team in the NBA gets more wide open looks in the NBA. You can rag on whether it's Gilbert Arenas, who I was listening to, whoever it is. You can listen to all these people rag on Luka and say he's not a great basketball player or this and that. But nobody creates more wide open shots in the NBA than Luka Doncic. Do you want Tim McMahon to either support or destroy your argument? Oh, both. both. Okay, well, let's, I, I respect Tim a lot. Let's see what happens. Tim McMahon was on with Sean and RJ this morning. Is Dallas a destination city? Well, listen. You, you can debate, is he a star still, all those sort of things. But the simple fact of the matter is, it was Mavericks versus Lakers for a big-name free agent, and the most glamorous franchise in the NBA had more years at a higher salary on the table. Now, the Lakers are going to have to jump through hoops to make that happen, but they were talking about a four-year, $80 million deal with Clay. The Mavericks had three for 50. He chose to come to Dallas. You know, that's uh, uh, the idea that Dallas is just some no way destination for free agents. Yes, that's off the table. Now, you know, how many times are the Mavericks going to be able to be in this this sort of a situation moving forward? We'll see. Obviously, Luke is going to be on a super max uh, for, for a while. I'll pause it right Not there because like he does he does get into the logistics of future salary cap, which is fine. Could but make maybe, it more difficult, yeah, may, but he's saying, yeah. But maybe not as relevant to this conversation. But, yes, that was kind of a kind of a give and take. He's not saying it's the destination, but he is like, you can't say that people don't want to come here. When have we ever beat out the Lakers for anything? That's a good point. Hell, we even lost. Didn't we just lose Dimwitty? Yeah. It, like, that was a few months ago. We beat him out for Kai. Somewhat true, yeah. yeah. So, the, so that's, that's it. two now. That's two. Ne- in, Nico, in Nico, Nico beat Nico beat the trade that L.A. had on the table, and then uh, Kyrie could have chosen L.A. There would have been a lot that they would have had to do, just yeah. kind of like what he's saying. But uh, Kyrie, I don't. I have to go back and and read everything, like because I felt at one point he did want L.A., but then it felt like you know I'm going to choose Dallas. I really think that this is a situation that I've liked, even though we didn't win. I liked this situation in the end. I like Jason Kidd. I like Luka Doncic. And I think that one thing to remember is Dallas was positioned to pay him the most and give okay. him the best contract, right? This is this is why the Clay Thompson thing is significant because Los Angeles was willing to give him an extra year at a higher average annual value compared to that yeah. situation with Kyrie where he had already gotten a feel, you did a little recruiting from within, but then also you had the better option for him when you just talk about the raw numbers. This one is flipped and you still ended up with uh, with uh, Clay, and I think that's why the, the question is worth asking. Well, I mean, Tim McMahon says yes, yeah. right? And he has a better read on the NBA than I do. I do not know the players uh, that much. Like, I know a few guys, but not many like he knows. I obviously do not have connections with front office and scouts like he does. So for him to say, hey, this was a big win for Dallas and that it shows that players do want to come here, not all players you know, but there are players that want to come here and now making it to the NBA Finals, Corey, I just assume when you got three wins away from winning the championship and you beat the Clippers, you beat Oklahoma City, who was favored over you, you beat Minnesota, who was favored over you, uh, that now players are going, wow, not only does he create open shots, but he's made it to a conference final and made it to an NBA final two out of the last three years. Yeah, I mean, it, it feels like the that that player that could take the mid-level exception or a number in that range would look at a team like the Mavericks and say, that's where I can get my ring or get my Derrick Jones Jr. 
Yeah, we'll go, th- get my, go get my man. contract and be a contributor on a championship team where I'm going to be seen for big-time money. That's an interesting point, the second point, because I know we were talking a lot about the first point, and you're definitely right about that. The second point is very valid as well. How I have many a third pl- point also. Oh, oh. Go ahead. Go ahead with these. Let's we'll type up the second I, point. All right, yeah. But that's another player who the NBA couldn't figure it out. They were like, hey, I know you have all kinds of athleticism. We can't figure it out. Goes to the Mavericks. They're like, what if we put you in this role? And he's like, thank you very much. Three years, $30 million. So I wonder how many players there are out there. And like Exum is another person who I know still has a lot of work to do, but is trying to rehabilitate his image in the NBA. So I think that's a fascinating point as well. The third point, Kevin, and I keep seeing it coming in on the text now too. Kevin, we've been fighting for this for decades now, I feel like. Is this about taxes? Taxes. This is the first time anybody's ever said, you know what? Because of taxes, I like this whole thing of playing in Texas. Maybe Chew, <laughs> but that was it. So Chew and Clay Thompson <laughs> are the only two. But and, even Chew wasn't vo- like it wasn't vocal. It was just a one-on-one yes, interview. This that's is the true. first time it's hit the big times uh, everywhere. So maybe other athletes are going to go, hey, what's going on in Texas that I need to know about? Because my agents never told me about this. He just said, take a big number. Kevin, I- you're a numbers guy, right? Yes. Um, how significant is that? Because I know sometimes we think of it as just like, oh, you're in Texas and all your earnings are here. But don't isn't there like kind of jock taxes and you kind of have to pay taxes yes. no matter where you play? But like, so how significant? Significant is the tax thing. Uh, can you lay that out in some way? Okay, so think about it here. What What's the state income tax of what's your income tax for the state at the end of the year? Is 0%. All right. Right? You don't have to file like a separate. I realize there's taxes on goods and services and stuff. Yeah, but they'll get you. They'll what about get you somehow, yeah. But you don't have to file a state income tax. In California, it goes up to 12.3%. That's a lot. Right? And I I realize his contract is less than this, but yeah, 12.3%. That's $6 million off potentially 50 million. And that's just for the state income tax. The jock tax is actually something totally different because obviously you rotate through all the different states and Mike has walked us through that once. But I think about that all the time in terms of like, hey, I'll give you a five-year, $160 million deal in California. Let's say everything is equal. I'll give you a five-year, $150 million deal in Texas. I get people want the headlines. Me? I want the money, and I'm like, where am I going to get the most money? Corey, point three. Did you already make it? Oh, that was point three taxes. Oh, yeah, okay, taxes. Oh, okay, <laughs> I'm going to tell you the next player that I think is going to demand to be a Dallas Maverick. Let's go. Do you have a player in mind? I'm going to throw this out, and you tell me. The internet keeps telling me that Dennis <laughs> Smith Jr. is going to going to. Well, okay, be. fine. He can demand whatever he wants. <laughs> Um, the internet is a he in this playing scenario. time is going to be really difficult, but I don't mind him coming onto the team for league minimum. I think the next player that's a big time player at the end of his career is going to say, that's where I want to go and be is Kevin Durant. Wow. Oh, because now, of his relationship. I do with think, Kai? I think Phoenix. Yeah. And I think everything, I think, I think Jason Kidd. I think Nico, I, I think Luca, I think he sees, uh, the success. I think, think that he would feel comfortable here I think he sees the open shots I I think he sees that as his career is uh I don't want to say deteriorating but going down from the peak of right like he's he's not at the peak of his career anymore he's 35 years old and I look he makes 50 million this year and 50 million next year I'm not saying it would be super easy but I think if he plays out his Phoenix time you know who I think he's going to want to play for the Dallas Mavericks at the end of his career it's an interesting and so I just look at this, and I will tell you, I think other players are going to want to come here, and I think a player that I think is going to want to demand here, and maybe even in January, and I don't know how you'd get it done because of his salary, but Phoenix is paying the most money in the NBA now for a basketball team. They have a $216 million payroll right now. So if they're trying to somewhat – I, I don't know, offload the next fifty million next year and kind of start over through like a Devin Booker start over. I think Kevin Durant's gonna be a guy who says, That's the team I wanna go play for. You know what's interesting? It makes the Dallas Mavericks kind of sound like the MLS a little bit, right? Huh? Like there's still players out there that they definitely have name value and they got something to their game. They're not as good as they used to be, but 
They can work in the MLS. We'll take your Clay Thompsons. We'll take your Kevin Durant. Maybe not as good as they used to be, but they still got something in the tank that can help this team in a name value. But you do that. You do that in MLS to sell seats. That's the Mavericks true. don't need to sell seats right now. They want to win a championship. And if I don't, that I think, is definitely. Fair. I think they're like right there in the front of the forefront of being able to do it. You know, this next coming season. And Kevin, that's why I told you I wish the season started like tomorrow so I could see this thing sure. start playing out. But we'll have time to work on things. But you're not trying to just fill seats. You're trying to win that championship. So I see what you're saying. It could be for different reasons, but it, it could still happen. And from the 469, bring me Jokic. I agree with that person. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't think he wants to leave Denver. All right. Fine. And then somebody's, Everybody's leaving him, though. I do Nobody know, wants to play with him. I do know that him. Kevin Durant does like leaving places. <laughs> that, is a, that is a very good point.